swimming lessons, board game reviews, baby names, and the guys from the Staying In podcast. This is We're Not Wizards. I've just had somebody, you know on Gmail you get little notifications from around Google. I've had somebody follow me on Google Plus. I just, I just think like, oh why? Like, what on earth? Does anyone still use Google Plus? What was Google Plus? It was basically like a social um, network I... thing. That was Google Circle, no, wasn't so it? So it no. then transformed into, like, like all of Google's good stuff, it then transformed into Google Plus, which was meant to be like Facebook plus Twitter meets the power of Google meets all that sort of stuff. It was just a bit like, who cares? Like it was, it was pretty good, but it was it, everybody was already entrenched in Facebook and Twitter. And every once in a while, I hear people go, "Oh, it's good. You should use Google Plus. Oh, you should really use it. No, it's really good." And I just think, "Yeah, but I could just go into like a cavern and shout because that's 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 the only reaction you're going to get. It's just <laughs> it's just going to be echo. It's awful." I remember was it was it when I was setting up the podcast the first time, and I was setting up the Gmail. And all I got for ages after was, was set up Google Plus, set up Google yeah. Plus. Yeah. Every time you do a YouTube thing, set up Google Plus, set up Google Plus, set up Google Plus, used it about once, yeah. and then got embarrassed with a number of people that just don't care. Yeah, no one cares on Google Plus. It's, it's just rubbish. It's just absolute nah. Um But uh, yeah, so there you go. I've had somebody add me on there. That's nice. Probably a bot. Uh, <laughs> How are you, um, are you guys on Spotify now? Yeah. No. Is it, oh yeah, yeah, our podcast is yeah. Sorry, yeah. we meant me personally. Well, uh, your your personally <laughs> rap album. Your <laughs> all, all your albums. Yeah. Chris like is, Chris Chris is, Doctor Beard, Dubstep Derby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's What's in the kitchen? <laughs> volume one, volume one, two, three, four. With his brand new album, <laughs> eight <laughs> eight miles of sausages. Oh, uh, eight mile. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's what, that was Richard's joke. Yeah. Oh, I just got it. <sighs> have you seen that movie? Brilliant. Peter's synapses yeah. are firing. <laughs> is it? Is it any good? Uh, Oscar winner. Yeah, Not as good as the first seven. It's any good though. <laughs> <laughs> I think he tried. Uh, and then there's obviously green that came before it. Yeah, the proclaimers blowed out the water. I reckon he was trying to beat your thing going round and meeting each other for jogging stuff, which seems to be a popular, a popular thing. You all look very fit and healthy, by the way. You all look kind of, you know, in the zone. Yeah, cheers. Ready to go. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. Really Actually, went running this morning. You know. Yeah, s- s- says the man, Pete, who hasn't run a kilometre. Uh, I tried, so. like, a few years ago, but I puked. <laughs> Cardio just isn't part of his exercise no. regime. It's all arms all the time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> is that is that Poppy again? Yeah. Do, 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 you, do you want me to tell you every time she barks? <laughs> no, I can guess. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's right. a very clear audio clue to that. <laughs> I okay. don't need a subtitle. I think that, that's, that's that'd be a wonderful kind of like uh, kind of feature to have for the podcast. You know, is it Poppy or something else? Whenever yeah. you're barking, so. <laughs> it's just always. It will dry just, up pretty quickly, though. Just, I think it's just definitely the same dog. Yeah, I think you do about two things, and then you would run out of things because then you would just do different dogs all the time, mm. which is kind of cool. So, I guess we better kind of start off. I guess mm. instead of meandering along, because yeah. that would be good. Without a structure, without any form, which is fantastic. So, um, let's talk talking about Pete again. Yeah, there we go. My favourite subject. <laughs> <laughs> I like and as Pete. I liked and having as. I liked having Pete on the show. Pete wasn't Pete wasn't. We had a we had a good time, didn't we, Pete? We had a love. I, I had a lovely time. I just talked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I just talked and talked, and you were you were kind enough to, you know, humor. not interrupt. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the thing about it was that um, was that I always find Peter mm. fascinating in terms of his ability to kind of like we're talking about Batman Metal, mm. and we get a link to um, Papa Roach in the email mm. as the, as the most relevant metal thing, 
So there's two things that you knew. That of. I knew of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. that's where me- that's where metal ended, isn't it? Like, basically, you had you had Iron Maiden, and then something, something, something. Yeah. Go on. And then. All right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Famous. And then Linkin Park, Papa Roach, and then the end of all music. That was it. <laughs> but I'm thinking they they, they they stopped making they, music. They at that made, point. Basically, they went here. We're done. They draw a line under it. They got, let's let's just end got, it here, lads. Yeah. Just that. They got to the. T- they they stopped making lecture series. Exactly. Yeah. They got to the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two soundtrack and just went, "Well, just call it a day." Yeah. They got to the point. <laughs> they got to the point where Pete's Audible subscription <clears throat> ran out. Yeah, it's about right. It's about right. But I was just thinking, <clears throat> Peter is either yeah. doesn't know about things yeah. <laughs> beyond Papa Roach, yeah. or he is he is the world's greatest troll, and he's stringing everybody along with his ability. <laughs> And I was thinking he was almost like he's actually like Aussie Mandeus at the Watchman, and he's actually sitting there in front of a bank of TV screens, yeah, knowing absolutely <laughs> just behind knowing me. absolutely everything that's going on. Yeah, just behind me. And then, is just a constant feed. I just what I do is I get a cable and jack it into the back of my head, like in the Matrix, the first one, the good one. But that would then explain how things like the Bake Off are just inconsequential. I don't need to know about it because look. I'm I'm looking at what's happening in you know yeah. Uzbekistan. Yeah, but the, dif- <laughs> the difference is you know what it is. It hasn't passed you by completely, so you have no idea what it is. Yeah. Pete just kind of no, I've heard it. I've only heard learns of it of when we mention things. it in passing. I've heard of most things. Like I'll, like for example, um, I know that um, here we go. <laughs> so I know that um, Stormzy is yeah. is a is a rap artist. Uh, like who's, as far as I understand, quite popular. But that's as far as I know but as that, well, because I'm, yeah. you know, I mean, even, but I'm even, at that even, age even, where I look at Stormzy, and he's just like nothing to me. Well, you know, <laughs> that, that sounds like fighting talk. I don't know. That sounds like you want to fight Stormzy. Poor Stormzy. Are you throwing down the gauntlet, <laughs> Richard? I think. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'm ready for you. Write nothing to me. I, I, know, I noticed. I noticed on uh, your. You've got a new belt in Taekwondo. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah, I did. Well, it's actually the old belt, but what they do in the highest technical realm is they take some insulating tape. Yeah. <laughs> and they put it round the edge of the belt. <laughs> this is true. What, what color? What color is your new belt? It's yellow. But it's got a green stripe in it. Oh, so that's that's a halfway to green, if that's correct. Yeah. It is halfway to green because right. you can you. Do oh, right. okay. Should we, should we let the two monks <laughs> and <laughs> trained martial artists Richard, speak Richard, amongst can themselves? I just check, Richard, is that, Richard, can I just check? Is that how you make a green belt? You just getting you get enough stripes so it's completely covered. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? You can laugh about it, but in it they've got um, two sides. I'm just opening my drawer and making a lot of noise, but they've got two sides to take one door. They've got the Taekwondo that everyone else knows, and then the Taekwondo class that I go is part of a kind of a miniature Secret franchise. For kids. Yeah, it's called Tiger Cubs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and what you get, no, this is true. It's all true and verifiable by photographs and written fact. Is that you get you get belts, and you get little black stripes that go around the belt. So the longer yeah. that you go to the classes, they actually put black. Insulating tape as well, by the way. Oh, it's right, not, yeah, you yeah. know, technical. Yeah. But I, I ended up with this. Oh, certificate. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Korean art of <laughs> self-defense certificate. It's not got my name on it, though. Could be anyone. Pete, where's your certificate? I want to see. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Oh. It's not It's not been framed. No. Is he, just... he pulls it out like the Bruce Lee school of martial arts. <laughs> oh, he's, he's still got the uh, rule book. Anyone could buy my, that. Uh, this is my... Hold on a second. This is my... G grade record card. There I am. Wow. Oh wow. Okay, what's the date on that? Years years ago. Uh, Two thousand two. Yeah. So uh, I I got to uh, yeah, Sir G, which is fourth grade. Um. Okay. Is this is this is this going to be just us showing off various certificates now? (laughs) Because I've not got anything near me. Like Richard just pulled out a whole gamut. I'm sure my doctoral thesis is around here somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. That's just like that's just like the ultimate mic drop, isn't it? Really, it's like it's just like yeah, well, <laughs> well yeah, I know, I I know be, you can punch I mean, and I kick, can't really lads, do it. But... In terms of self defence, yeah, yeah, I don't know if you guys have heard, but uh, the pen is actually mightier than the sword. So, <laughs> um, 
But anyway. I think I've got a certificate for a kind of fast and effective reading course yeah. I did. Yeah. I don't know if that means 50 anything. 50 metres, 100 metres, 250 metres. <laughs> so you've got. So did, any, did any of you when you were kids, like, when, did you ever have that when, when you did swimming classes when you were kids where you got little badges that you'd sew onto your trunks? Did you ever have that? Dan, we, were, we, were, yeah, we, were, we used to swim um, the same swimming baths when we were kids. Fimble Mill. We did. Did you not have that when you were at school? We did. Did you not have like teddy bear one, like, teddy like, bear two, Literally teddy bear like three? ships in the night, we used to swim past each other. Yeah. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't have badges because I didn't, I don't I think I achieved that much in the aquatics. <laughs> um, but I do remember getting kind of the small material stripes that you would kind of sew onto. You'd have your red stripe first and your purple stripe. And I think I don't remember anymore I'll go after that. Um, and it was all insulation. Tape. I did the one where you have to jump in the pool in your pajamas and pick up the brick. Yeah, I remember doing that. Don't know what that okay. one was. And swim for a hoop underwater. Are they allowed to do that nowadays? I mean, is that not major health and safety? You're not allowed to actually even look at the brick in case it hurts someday. <laughs> I don't know. I, d- I just love that um, British kind of uh, sort of. Uh, theatricality to the to the to the role play of this situation. Right, it's the middle of the night. You've just woken up to an almighty splash in your country countryside lake. There's someone in the bottom. It's Grandma. Jump now, of, in. Of, co- of course, you are wearing your pajamas. <laughs> like, <laughs> and Grandma is tied to a house brick. I know. It's all because we all encounter that. We're in our pajamas walking along a lake. Splash. <laughs> what it what it didn't and there's say there's a is handy float like, on the riverbank. <laughs> you didn't say just before that. I oh, see granddad's been at it again. Front <laughs> <laughs> it off like this. <laughs> flak flat cap in hand. I'm away. I'm away, I'm gone. <laughs> yeah. It's, of course nowadays, if you're down with the kids they would say there's a there's a kilo of um, cannabis in that pool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just be diving kind of straight in mm. which would be really really interesting um, <clears throat> I'm going to probably do a, an intro outro because there's no way I can intro now. <laughs> <laughs> this is like 12 minutes in Yeah, I think like three, three times you said I better intro this so we don't just meander it's a bomb movie you like. saying that has caused us to meander into various different That's areas just ridiculous do we well, need to sync up as well. staying in way do we need to sync up as well what no, I'm just, I like the challenge. It'll be really good fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. no. What? We could do a, ha- we what? Could do a click or we could do a clap and I could take it out later on. I could just make sure we all stop recording at the same time at the end we, and that'll do the same job. We we do a clap. We're very yeah. well versed in the clap. If you want to do a clap. Is it the clap? Well, you might be. <laughs> <laughs> That's above. Well, That's right. I made a... Joke about sexually that's transmitted a, disease from the Victorian joke, yeah. era. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, and he'll need to go to the doctor for that one to get himself some cream after getting the glorious oh, clap. Man. Um, no, it's fine. It's all good. It's good to have you all here, though, as I don't think there's been there's not been a case of all of the staying and crew here. No. I think there's been a case that some of you have been here, mm. and then I happen to insult <clears> one <throat> of you that I'm looking at. Just now, and he's stone up. I believe you insulted me repeatedly. So I don't think it was. I don't think it was a one-off. I did insult you repeatedly. I just want to clear the air, Dan. I didn't kind of. Ins- I did, didn't I? Stormzy, Frosty, both like two big, big sort of aggressions going on. There'll be a third. Both, episode. both are weather as well. Yeah. <laughs> I just need to find somebody called Sunny, and I'm all in. Mm. I can fight them with my green tag and stuff like that, but it, <laughs> but it's good to no. It's I was to say it's always good to have you on. It's good to have you back. It's good to have you kind of. You've all been on at separate times, except for Dan and I. Apologise profusely. I just like to go on public right, no. record. I'm, I'm used to it now. You know, for just forget. It was ages ago as well, and I ended up doing an entire episode <laughs> where I pretended to be a wizard just for you. And I'm, I'm pretended. I, I, you, you seemed pretty confident and pretty sure of yourself. <laughs> I, I, w- I would argue you, f- you sounded more comfortable being a wizard than you ever I have been like not being a wizard. Point out that I'm a decent actor. Mm. <laughs> you, you couldn't. You couldn't act that level of comfort. I would like to say that um, I'm definitely not a wizard. On brand. In- 
I would like to definitely say that is the, that is the situation and that is the case. <laughs> but anyway, this is me publicly saying to Dan that on that episode, which was probably about a year ago, where I forgot to say your name, that I utterly apologise for that, and then we apologise with it, you know, afterwards, and I hope everything is fine and that you're kind of talking to me. Do you accept my apology? I'll think about it. Thank you very much. That'll do. Cliffhanger. Can can I just briefly say that swimming awards sound a lot more fun than they did when I was a kid. I've just been looking at the uh, requirement levels for the personal survival parts one and personal survival parts two of the Swim England uh, safety skills certificate. Um, So... So... um, So... To pass your part one, there's something quite interesting where, right, to pass your safety skills award, first, enter the water with a swivel entry, walk five metres away from the side, turn 180 degrees and return to the side. That just sounds like dancing. And then then there's another bit where it's take up and hold the help position for five minutes. What... No. That's, what, 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 what is the help it. position? It's just what is the ah, help position? I don't know. And then, and then there's a bit, and then there's a bit where it turns into some sort of fun computer game. From standing on the side, throw a buoyant object, e.g., a float or a ball, to land into a hoop positioned four meters away. The swimmer must score a minimum of three successes from five attempts. Is that water polo? He's just throwing shit from the side into hoops. You're well safe. I'm not, like, confident in swimming. I couldn't even remember those instructions. I'd just be hoping, don't drown, please don't drown, don't try and drown. I, I, and I, I sw- as, as best you I, can, always float. I, I, exactly. swam, I swam for a team called Wally Wasps, and in thinking about it, a wasp is probably the worst animal for, like, a swimming team to be named after. <laughs> <laughs> How many how many pints of beer have we had? We've just seen these things just stranded in there. Yeah. <laughs> just not even just, like just just full of just kids deep. just like kicking frantically, just swimming around in circles in the pool. <laughs> and then getting really angry and kind of hurting people when they get out of the pool when you try and rescue them. Oh. <laughs> Um, ours, 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 my teacher was uh, very Spartan. He would literally pick you up and throw you in the deep end. Like he would literally pick you up. That was how you. That was your initiation from the shallow end to the deep end. He would pick you up and throw you in the deep end. Literally, he took that. that wasn't ex- my dad, was it? He taught me. He, he he taught me to ride my bike by pushing me down a hill. <laughs> he said by throwing you and the bike in the pool <laughs> in the deep end. into a swimming yeah. pool yeah. down a hill. What? How steep was the hill, Sam? I don't. know well, as Snowden. as a as a, like a I don't know how old I was seven eight as an eight year old child the hill was like that hill in the Simpsons you know yeah, that yeah. Bart uh, skateboards down yeah um, but obviously it wasn't that I've passed it since it's an old Anglo Ang- Anglo Saxon grave site. oh my gosh <laughs> Did it... so you can learn some history on the way down, down. down a grave site. <laughs> yeah, it's like a it's like an old like Anglo-Saxon uh, burial mound apparently. Um, <laughs> Cuz the Anglo-Saxons are big on country. cycling and <laughs> it was for those who didn't make it. In years to come. <laughs> uh and we were at the top of this mound and he just pushed pushed me down and went there you go son. <clears throat> And, you, and he doesn't smoke, but he, that's the image I've got for some reason. Just like, he doesn't smoke, but in that go, moment, Sam. he took out a cigar <laughs> and said, my boy. <laughs> you turn around. That's you, my boy. You turn around and you see he's got the stabilizers in both hands. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. So I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> just, and then it just disappears off. I've got... um. I've got a, a, a kind of an issue, gentlemen, and I need your um I need your help and I need your mm-hmm. I guess guidance on this. Because you're all you're all purveyors and um enjoyers of cardboard. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and as you know, we have mm. been speaking to people on and off <clears throat> for some time. And we get a lot of Kickstarter people on. And through I can say only say a moment of weakness. 
because I've had a very stringent kind of preview policy and review policy. Because obviously, once you get known, every everybody's basically saying, "Would you like to review? Would you like to preview yeah. this game?" Yeah. yeah. So I got sent, and I'm not going to say what it is. Go on, show it. I got sent. I got sent a game. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ! What does that mean? You like Sophie's choice. What does that mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. can we? I, uh, uh, it's like, no. Yeah, okay. Go on. Let's, but, let's have a chat. But, okay. About that? Okay. Yeah. Here, okay. Here's my conundrum. Okay. Yeah. I when I was reviewing video games. Yeah. And even when I wrote kind of a couple of board, I did. I put a board game review out recently for Mice and Mystics on Polyhedron Collider. Plug, plug, hint, hint. Mm-hmm. And there was always a precedent before it as to whether people thought it was an okay game or not an okay game. Right. Yeah. And I'm feeling the pressure with this because it's not like... You're setting that precedent. Yeah. It's like not like anybody else has written about this. And I'm wondering, and this has kind of occurred to me, that um, board games are very, very subjective. And I've essentially got the weight of the world on my evolutionary shoulders yeah. regarding this particular game. Now, the first thing is, like, I've, I'd, I made a video, I made an unboxing video, which I haven't put out there, because I was like, okay, maybe it's a bit too soon. And the, it is a Kickstarter game, which means it's an even bigger sense of pressure, because it's not like the game's made and published. This is a game that's going in front of people who they're going to be asking money for. Yeah. And it's a case of, if I turn around and say, well, actually, it's good, it looks lovely, but I'm, it's not really my game, then I could be stopping them from getting funded. Is, is it, I, is it like, has it got like a, uh, has it got like an ethical message? Like, is it, is it trying to be pro-science or is it trying to be anti-science or? No, it's not. The, I mean, okay, I mean, it's just generally. Here's a, here's an entertaining idea. If I say to, if I say to you, can I remember the creatures in No Man's Sky? Yeah. How yeah. they were, looked like they were made up of various animals. So that's the kind of the premise of the game is you're making various animals. Right, right, right. Uh, and right. then you're putting them into an environment, and then see what happens. You score points and they survive based on if they're adapted to certain environments. So the premise behind it's the same. I'm sitting here going how do you, how do you go about critiquing a game? I mean guy I, I mean has there been games has I, there been games that you've seen that have reviewed really, really well mm. that you've just kind of bounced off of? I mean, am I gonna have that amount of effect? I mean am I I don't want to end up doing a middle of the road review or a preview. Do I say I'm reviewing it, or does this is the other thing? Do I say I'm previewing it and just say, what's, "Well, this is what the uh, game is your, like"? What's you know? your What's your um, worry about uh, <coughs> about a preview versus a review? I think a review, because Kickstarters are potentially prone to change, yeah. and they could look at they could look at still be in the same case of working on the rules before they produce the fi- the final product. Yeah. Whereas, so it's a very final thing. The review is a very, very, can be a very, very final thing. The preview could be just, well, this is what I think of it so far. It could be subject to change. See you later. And I guess then my mm. opinion has less weight. It's just, this is what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a difficult, it's a difficult pressurised situation to be in. Uh, one One of the things that makes a good critique of anything really is knowing what is knowing which audience yeah. will get the best or the most out of a certain thing. Yeah. So um, I can give a couple of examples. Uh, Mark Kermode recently uh, reviewed Wrinkle in Time and he didn't really like it, but he was very much knowledgeable in the in the review that it's probably because it's a film primarily aimed at 7 to 11 teenage girls yeah. and he's not one of those. And he was like... I'm very aware of this. I went into it with the wrong conceptions about what the film was, so I'm going to watch it again, knowing that this is a film made for a very specific uh, and limited uh, bracket. I've written game reviews in the past. I did one for Absolver, yeah, which is a very sort of, which is a very hardcore 
um, like combat game where you had to rely on like stances and um, learning like martial arts techniques to take down your enemies. It was very well received, me, wasn't it? If I remember, yeah, yeah it's very well received, and I and I gave it a good score, yeah. but I didn't I didn't enjoy it. But I was I was able to go. If you love this kind of game, if you if you're willing to go deep into this combat system and learn all its nuances and everything, mm. then this is re- this is really going to be the the game the game for you. So I think when you're when you're looking at it, if you can play it, and if you don't, if you're not immediately drawn to it, then as a critic, you've got to ask the first question you ask when you're butting up against it is is is, is you ask right what. What is it that I'm not liking here? Is it is it the game or is it the fact that the game's just not been made for me? Yeah. And if the game's not been made for you, then you find the audience that it it possibly has been made for. And then you just then you just pitch it to those people basically. You don't need to say that you don't like it. You just pitch it to the to the right people. Unless it's awful and you need to go, actually, there's also, just mechanics also, in here that like, just don't work. You don't have uh, no critic has a responsibility to the company that is making the thing like your responsibility is to no. the people who come to you each and every time for a review or for an opinion on a, on, on a on a piece of work and if you don't like something then you have enough of a built-in audience to the point of they will go okay yeah because i've read this because i've read a bunch of these reviews before i've heard a bunch of these opinions before from this exact same critic i know that they they tend to like this kind of game therefore in this part of the review where they say i didn't like i don't know the theme for example that's okay because i'm i'm totally on board with this theme and the rest of the stuff it sounds like a really cool game therefore i trust this opinion but that's how that's basically how critics work right like you get to, you should get to know the opinions of the critics that you actually like because ultimately they're going to be the best arbiter of um they're going to play the things and enjoy the things before you, and you can then interpolate what it is that they said, so that you can actually figure out whether or not you like the thing. Interpolate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah interpolate. Uh, uh, interpolate. <laughs> Hang on. A Hang second. on. I'm going to oh, check that as well. Let's that. let's all let's all quickly Google it. I'm going to see. Insert I think it's, something it's... of a different nature into something else, or interject a remark in a conversation. Uh, so, fair enough. So there you go. Uh, Every day is a school day. No, it's just a, it's just the whole thing. Here's a company that has, because I'm aware that rev- I'm aware that preview copies, review copies cost money, and and I have e- e- we've even gone to the situation where somebody has said, guys, thank you so much for being on the show, you know, I, I, thanks for having me on the show, um, as a here as just because you kind of help spread the word here, we'd like to send you kind of like you know here have a copy of the game, and um. It's kind of like, but I'm aware that it costs money for you to make this, and I'm aware it's going to cost money for you to mm. ship it. So I've always up to then, I've just said, I'll tell you what, we'll get you on the show and we'll have a chat. But this time, the artwork in this game really, really struck me, and I went, okay, I will actually mm. have a look at the game. But now I'm sitting here in this quandary going, I need to be, <clears throat> am I objective if I'm doing a preview? Do I just say, well, here's the cards, this is what you do, and this is how you play it? See you later. Yeah. What, what do you mean by or, is, fine. what do you mean by objective? As in saying, here's the mechanics, but not to say what I think of the mechanics. But what this is here's the, what, here's what, the art. What, what's the value in an objective review? It's a preview as opposed to a review. What's the obje- what what what's for kicks for kick but for kick but for Kickstarter that's a uh, useful yeah, thing. Abs- absolutely to know but, but how- the number of people who are going to do objective previews, like that. Objective previews, literally but, anybody but, can write them because they can, they can, they're just like, this is how the thing works. Yeah. Whereas, like, what is? But surely, if you, I, I, but surely, if you've got the objective review, you can rather than, rather than give the objective review, you can give your own opinion, but you can have the caveat that explaining the position that this is in and it is subject to change and these things aren't set in yeah. stone based on the product as has been given to you and as you hold in your hands right here, right now. This is what I think of it. Mm. It might change due to the nature of it. If this was a game that you'd bought down in the local shop that was a finished product, yeah. you wouldn't worry about that. But because mm. you know it could change, that's where you worry. So you just say that this could change. This is my opinion on how it stands at the moment. Yeah. As I say, it's, it's just a it's a, diff- it's a strange situation for us to be in. Because me and Colin, 
when we've spoken on the podcast, I mean, we have talked games that we loved, games that we didn't like, we've brought up, but I mean, the game's already out there. So whether our preview or review happens or not, it's not really going to have particularly a huge effect on the game. You know, somebody will look at it and go, ah, well, they thought it was okay, so that's fine. Or our, our listeners will listen to it and say, well, actually, that's probably worthwhile kind of picking up. I guess we've chickened, I've always chickened out of actually doing the preview reviews and have somebody on to chat about the game mm. because then I feel by bringing the person on, you can find out more about the person and then a lot of the time I'll have folks say, do you know what? They were lovely, They were that was a lovely guy, oh, that was a lovely woman. I'm going to back the game based on the fact yeah. that they came across as passionate, they came across as really interested, they knew their audience and stuff like that as well. So it's just, a, it gets, comes to reviews because <clears throat> the other way I was going to play it was to say, I'm just going to write about how this game makes me feel. Yeah. As in, yeah. I'm just going to put down and say, looking at it, what what kind of feelings does it invoke in me? Kind of a different way of doing a review. More of a case of an off the cuff. Is it going to make me happy? Is it going to make me sad? Am I going to have to do a lot of thinking? Mm -hmm. Is it going to confuse me at all? What kind of feelings I'm getting as opposed to maybe saying, ah, oh, the artwork could be better. More kind of a... It's, it's just... A, because board games are in this strange place of kind of reviewing where I see a lot of reviews, but I see a lot of mechanics. And I don't see I don't see the actual critique. I Maybe until the very end. I actually had this discussion with somebody the other day um, about where board games are in comparison to video games as a medium. And as somebody who's been around video games for their entire life and been in the industry for far too long now... Um, I've seen how video games has matured as a medium. Um, and it's really interesting to see where board games are at at the moment. Because as a medium, you're having discussions at the moment. You're basically in 2001, 2002. Keir, you're, yeah. you're just before Kieran Gillen's New Games Journalism, basically. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because... Because what you're talking about is is qualitative, much more qualitative reviews, much more. How do I think? How does it make me feel? What are the stories that emanate out of it? That what is and genuinely, what is the most interesting part of this? Like, how do I interact with this thing, and how does it make me? Uh, how does it actually make me um, emotionally respond to it? That yeah. is something that not every critic can do. However, any old fucker on the internet can talk about, can read the rule book out. Yeah. You know, I mean that's what it is. I mean, I can I can open this up just now and I can say, okay, you know, looking at the box, see, I'm a sucker for artwork, so instantly I'm thinking, this looks lovely. Right. This is Sounds you know, me. this is a, you know, I'm looking at this going, I'm interested in opening up this box because of the artwork, and then when you go in the artwork, <clears throat> people can't see this at home, but you know, this is illustrating the point. Now, can you see that? Fine, yeah. Mm. And the artwork is like that all the way through. It's kind of like... And it's just a case of, this makes me feel like I want to play the game. Right. <laughs> Which, that's... But I, th I think that's a completely valid opinion to yeah. have. And that, as a yeah. someone who's reading a review and reading up to s decide if you want this, you want, to, you want to hear from an objective point of view what their hands-on feelings are. So if I'm reading, if I'm because I if I'm someone who really enjoys um, the production value of of board games where the excellent artwork and kind of when they're really beautifully put together, if I'm sitting there and I see you saying the artwork and this is fantastic, I'm immediately going to be interested in this because I know that you share that same view of loving kind of artwork in games. So that's going to get me interested more. I don't think there's I don't think there's any problem with that. Yeah, but, but as Peter alluded yeah. to earlier, it's about the reader, the the person watching the review, kind of taking your temperature. Going, oh, okay, he likes that kind of art. Interesting. Okay, and they log that away for future reviews. And, yeah, and it's almost they're almost kind of reviewing you as much as the game in terms of just trying to get a handle on you and take your temperature, really. Yeah, which is the other thing is as well is do you go for a video review? Because I've got a face for podcasting, you can see this evidence in front of you. <laughs> God, what I, is I, that? I, I, you're looking, you're looking <laughs> gorgeous. And put that away. But I'm not. I'm not, yes. I'm not. Do you want to see my elephant impression? <laughs> um, it's lucky I'm standing up. Um, but yeah, so that's the other thing is as well. So the consideration of the medium because it's not like I've got an editor mm. saying to me, mm. "You got to write 500 words on this, or 800 words on this, and a thousand words for it." 
I could do a video where I interpret what I think of this game in the medium of dance. Sure. If I really wanted to. Yeah. Because it's kind of an open... And then I'm thinking, do I do a video? Or do I write something down? I mean... Well, what... what? Go I mean, you're, you're free to, obviously, move in whichever circles you wish. Um, whether or not a dance-based review is the way to go, I'm not 100% sure. I must, I must I was, admit... I, must, I mean, if you want to do it... I must admit, video games as a medium go ahead. have not got to interpretive dance reviews yet. So don't, don't go too far ahead of us. <laughs> yet. Just yet. <laughs> Not yet. Pete is working yeah, very yeah. hard. To bring In the back, out. you can see my lab, where I've got all sorts of beakers and chemicals, where we're trying to get that sorted. <laughs> but I guess the other thing is, is that it comes then it comes down to um, the interpretation of the review and what. Because I'm coming from a point of view where we've not done many reviews, mm. so it's a case of this could be this could do two things. It could make me people end up flooding us mm -hmm. with lots and lots of other offers for us to do pre previews for Kickstarters, which is a good thing and potentially a bad thing. I know that one of the sites that we have a close affiliation with had to turn around and say, guys, we can't do Kickstarter reviews anymore because we're getting like five a week. Mm. So it's just a strange thing. I've got a time to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to sort it out. It's just, a, it's just, as I say, it's this kind of weight of expectation on your shoulders because I know there's going to be in the next couple of weeks there's an email coming out to me to say how are you getting on with it what do you think of it so far tentatively <laughs> touching the water have you considered like just taking it along to a game group meeting so it's not just your opinion in there as well it's kind of your opinion plus so you can actually see what it's like with different player counts and different variables yeah. I know yeah. from Sam and I reviewed a game well, it was kind of, we weren't reviewing the game, it was part of the working process of the game. And we kind of experienced it with different player counts and stuff like that. And it's kind of, that's that kind of in between kind of design process preview kind of stage, that area. But having another set of eyes looking at it as well might make it easier for you. Yeah, I'm thinking regard. it. I mean, I'm going to get it to the, I'm going to get it to the group and just say, well, this is how you play it and see how you get on. I'm also going to play it with the kids as well because it seems to be quite a, a family friendly game which is quite good you know but we'll we shall see it's all kind of it's all kind of quite interesting but um yeah you know but uh, not stress but just responsibility and it's a kind of a dawning on me that there's somebody that's approached me to say well listen your opinion might mean something to other people so therefore could you give us your opinion on this which is kind of kind of strange um you know Um, Dan. Hello. With you. I hope the wee one's doing well, by the way. Congratulations he's... on that as well. Thank you very much. He's he's fast asleep in the next room. I'm in his room at the moment. Are you? Um, he's obviously not in here with me. Uh, we, we have someone staying with us at the moment, so there you, they'll be staying in this room while he is currently fast asleep in our bedroom next door. Cool. How's Bless it? Him. I mean, have you have you found time to play any kind of board games yourself? Has time become a very compact? constricted type thing for you at the moment or i mean I, i'm i'm unfortunate in that my wife isn't a huge board game fan and yeah. um, she does she does like board games more in a kind of a more of a group setting kind of more casual she, she'll love a game of code names and stuff like that mm -hmm. and we have played kind of board games in the past and she's a really big fan of uh sherlock holmes consulted detective um and i've got a couple of games that we're going to play so i've got a couple of the escape the room uh the Exit Room Escape kind of kind of one shot board games. Yeah. So I've got a couple of them we're going to play. Um, although I did actually approach a, a, a reapproach a game with her the other day that she didn't shoot me down immediately, which was good, and that I wanted to uh, revisit uh, Pandemic, which would lead me into finally playing Pandemic Legacy, which I have had ever since uh, my good friends purchased this for me. <laughs> it's been sat waiting to me for me to play it, but. I need to play it with my wife who has played Pandemic. Yeah. My heart kind of got a bit broken when she finally played Pandemic. I think played like two games of it and then went, you know what? I think I've had my fill of that. That's me done. <laughs> I've like, oh, oh no. <laughs> but no, it can, it can go for so much longer. Don't end this now. Don't, 
don't ruin the dream. Um, <laughs> it was like the gateway but... into Willy Wonka's garden. <laughs> and then she just went, yeah. no, we're not going into this room. We're going to Tesco's. Yeah. Just rips up, <laughs> just, just just rips up the golden ticket. <laughs> exactly. Come back. So, yeah. So when I, I revisited it the other day and she was open to it because she she'd, she'd uh, suggested playing one of the exit uh, room escape games. So I was mm. like, ooh, she's thinking of board games. Maybe we'll, we'll get back into that. So hopefully I'll be able to do a bit more kind of board gaming um, but there's just there is very little time in the evening time. Like he goes to bed at seven, probably between seven and nine is my kind of window. Yeah, you've then got to factor in having your dinner, yes, settling down, doing it, doing a bit of digesting. By that time, it's it's time for bed. So that's my life now. I mean, I, I, I mean, I've never had to allocate time for digesting. <laughs> well, once you once you've had your, once you've had your dinner, you don't want to immediately go into an activity. You want to be able to relax for well, a bit. You forget you you forget that Chris does it instantaneously. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There is there is no wait time for Chris. <laughs> it's not. It's like the kind of the alien. He has got acid for blood. It just kind of yeah. automatically goes in <laughs> and kind of dissolves. I'm, it just dissolves. I'm pretty sure that in in years to come, um, he will actually be kind of studied as a man who had four various stomachs for different. Like things. a cat. He's, he's <laughs> like <the> Rumen. <laughs> <laughs> Just, He's actually uh, the next starter, stage in evolution. Starter main dessert and <laughs> just, one specific coffee and cigars sorbet. and cheese. Yeah, <laughs> just imagine that. Just like that. It's just like Chris. What are you doing? Um, chewing the cud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear. But um, so yeah. That's, that's the that's the extent of my board gaming life now. I've I've played a few more video games because I can. I'll play them solo. Um. So my wife goes to bed a bit bit earlier than I do, so I can play a bit then in the in the hours of ten to eleven, and then my eyes start to droop and I go to bed myself. Because my life has changed so much. But the thing is, what will happen is that see in eighteen months' time, when he's um, when he's approaching two years old, mm. nature will wipe this all from your memory, all the tiredness. <laughs> All the waking up in the middle of the nights and everything like that, because it's happened to me a couple of times. And you'll turn round, and he'll be totting about, and you'll go, "Oh, isn't he lovely? Oh, isn't he so cute? Look at him; he's got his little little personality." And then one of you'll say, "Shall we have another one?" <laughs> I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, no, yeah, he did say he did he did say in eighteen mm. months. He did, say. he did. He did. Yes. Natural, it'll be a natural amnesia. Amnesia happens to all parents because you forget at the moment. You're thinking, oh, four o'clock in the morning. This is crazy. What am I doing? And you'll also have the, I definitely had less sleep than you conversation. Cause that oh happens. no! To be fair, because uh, sh- she's still on maternity leave, um, I get more sleep because I'm I'm the one who stays asleep at night. She's like, yeah, I'll, I'll take care of him. Then I'm like, fine, absolutely fine. <laughs> Weekends, that's a different story. What about bank holiday me, weekends, Dan? Oh, it's good. Yeah, uh, half like half the week I'm like on on duty. <laughs> did you um? Did you get Easter eggs then? Uh, we haven't we haven't got Easter eggs. But he can't he can't eat any Easter eggs. Yes, he can. He's only six months. What? Old. I know, but well, he, no, no, Dan, you're missing the trick. <laughs> is that you buy your Easter eggs for Toby? Yeah. And goes, oh, it, it, Toby's got Easter eggs. We'll eat them for you. <laughs> exactly. But just remember that we did buy you Easter eggs, and we're not terrible yeah. parents. Yeah, exactly. This is like uh, Sam's kids' popcorn version at the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Richard, I can't wait. Uh, Pete's coming up for the much for uh, to have the weekend that he didn't have. All right, um, yeah, it's a lovely way of putting <laughs> it because he, he wanted so, to get on a bus because he, he really wants to get on that mega bus. I like, um, I like to how you pre- you pictured it as a a kind of a natural disaster, and then, and then Chris Chris piped in. He just missed a bus. <laughs> <laughs> God, I wish. Uh, I think you're um, fine, Richard. So yeah, so... Uh, I said that, so you've actually oh! forgotten me again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it's, the, it's the a beef habit you've got has there. not yet been squashed. <laughs> no. Well, it was the day you've just He's reignited it. Oh my goodness! Okay, I am a wizard. I am a wizard. <laughs> I am a wizard. <laughs> right? You heard so, it here first, folks. So yeah, so 
So Pete and Chris, uh, well, Pete's yes. coming up. Uh, Chris is going to come along uh, in a few weekends' time, and we're going to go to the cinema where I've got this grip going on <laughs> with my child's popcorn I'm, mix. Just, just, uh, just on watch. this. Just on this. It does always yeah. sound like you're a character from the Beano when you refer to it as a grip. A Roger the Dodger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. So hopefully, when we're all trundling into Infinity War with the tickets that I've already booked... When, when are because, you going? Uh, 12... Th- no, I won't say the time. We're going on... <laughs> I've already said it. We're going... <laughs> we're going to be at the Cineworld in... At 12.30 on the Saturday. Okay. Um, because I'm not doing another midnight screening because they are the okay. worst. And I don't want to be... Well, yeah, so I I went to the midnight screening for Deadpool and the original Avengers. Right. Mm-hmm. And oh, was that the one with even, um, Ray Fiennes and Augusta Winter? And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was only two or three people in, the in there. Oh, um, and I also... In Aberystwyth at uni, I went to uh, a midnight... Oh, no, it was a triple bill... Um, but at midnight they showed the blade, the third blade movie. So they'd show Blade One and Two, and then they did the third Blade. Oh, that's two. a long time to oh, wait for that God. film. <laughs> yeah, it's just like God. this film's great. This film's actually a little bit better. I'm really enjoying it. Here comes the. Th- oh, oh. No. I hope he goes to prison. Uh, um. So so yeah. So um. Yeah, we're going. Um. And so I'm hoping that we're all trundle in there. To Infinity War, the biggest film of all time, <laughs> with our with our little kids packs. <laughs> no, Are getting, you actually getting the I'm one getting... that's got like the carrot sticks? No, no, no. It's it's a it's a small popcorn, but they just fill the box. Really, they don't care about it. It's like they fill that box, <laughs> and then buried inside the box is a pack of magic stars, <laughs> and then also buried in the box is a Capri Sun <laughs> for the price for the price. Of a small popcorn. It's it's. I I've I've got it going on. <laughs> I like I just like the idea of Sam walking up to the counter, looking at the woman in the eye, and saying, "I'll have three child boxes, please." <laughs> but that's what you got to do. That's my cinema grift. Is when you're ordering popcorn, it's not a grift. You don't grift. Need, Sam. You don't. It's choosing. It is. From it the is menu. because it is. No, 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 no. It is because they don't advertise. They don't advertise a child's popcorn. They just don't. It's just not on the menu. But you have to ask for it. To get the smaller, more economical and oh better eating experience. The funny thing about the first time I ordered this kids box is that uh, Lisa and I were watching it in Molly's Game, which I think was an 18 rated film. And I was just in there with a little kids box, which I think had like oh some sort of kids tiger print on the outside. Oh. Uh, I can just imagine when Sam sorry. walks away from the counter with his three boxes of popcorn. He stops, looks at the camera, and the shades go down, and you get that ding, <laughs> ding, 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 thug life. Um, but yeah, the 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 midnight screening things is uh, it's wonderful being part of the zeitgeist, and you do get quite a nice feeling that everyone's in the same. Like no one in this room has seen this film before. Um, we could be like the first people in the country or the area to be yeah. seeing that film, and that's that's. Uh, an exciting experience but you always walk away from the film going that was great but i really want to go to sleep and um like i've just i've just come off the back of night shifts now and when you're trying to enjoy something or get involved with anything it's just like i've just been sitting down just like wandering around in zelda for a couple of hours because i just don't have the mental Mm. wherewithal to really engage and enjoy and that's the thing. Like, I don't want to go into Infinity War because the cost of going to the cinema is so prohibitive and expensive. I don't want to go in there and you know miss something or not enjoy something mm. because I really, really, really want to go and see it at midnight. Like the last two times, no, actually, yeah, no, the, the last three times I've been to the cinema with Chris, twice I've fallen asleep because of the shifts I've been working on. And that's not Chris's fault. That's one of my great anecdotes. <laughs> Popcorn special, <laughs> and uh, and and the thing is, is that like they were both two. They were they were two films that I was really enjoying. So I kind of don't want that to happen again. So we're going peak 
Right, start of the afternoon, Infinity War, loads of time. Because that's the other thing I don't... I, I, there's lots of things I don't like about going to the cinema. <laughs> I don't like going to the cinema and like not having a lot of the day afterwards. Right, Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Like, cause if you go at yeah. like four or five o'clock, you're in there for you're in there for three hours, and then it's like eight o'clock, and you're just like, well, yeah. what do we do? I now? mean, technically, technically, a midnight showing is probably the best outcome of that. <laughs> 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 what twenty one hours? Still loads of the day <laughs> left. <laughs> just got to bed. <laughs> you know? Um, do they still serve kids popcorn at that late at night if you're going for the late showing? Because surely there'd be some <laughs> kind of. So not some kind of law. Sorry, hang sorry, on, sonny. I take it you're not walking up to the counter and going like on your knees with your trainers underneath your knees. <laughs> uh, no, it, the, the grift originally started from <laughs> the advice of a senior employee. Not a grift. <laughs> Cannot it's stress this enough. It's not a grift. <laughs> it's requesting a product that they have. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not a child. I'm not meant to know about this wonderful product. Well, they, hang on, they don't. They don't advertise it in a way that only children can hear. <laughs> I, I generally have never seen this product uh, on sale. I had to ask for it. Is it like? How did you find they, out they said, about it? Is it like when you, you go? know about this? Is it like when you go to those? Some of those. Sometimes you go to those like proper traditional Chinese restaurants. And there's two menus. One for like just anyone and then the one that is for the you know the proper kind of the pure locals and it's written in like mandarin and it, there's stuff on the menu you don't see on the they other they call menu. it the grifters menu yeah 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 I, I i went to a place like that in uh in new york uh a chinese restaurant where <coughs> there's actually um they had two restaurants so it's a bit more of an extreme version of like you're on about chris but like the top of the the top part of the restaurant was this really sort of fancy uh restaurant like dining and and sort of like white linen tablecloths and we actually we were told go down to go down to the bottom and we're just like oh let's, this looks a bit weird like you go down it's a bit dingier like the guy serving us was the rudest guy that like i've ever known just like just threw us like gave us free um he says uh, like the worst <laughs> but it was incredible the food was the best chinese food i have ever had and it was like we wouldn't have had that experience, like because it was truly like we serve food for the people who know about us. So we like make we like put more effort in basically into the food. You get charged less because you you you've come to the right place. So I've I've got history. Are you excited about Infinity War then, Sam? Uh, um, <laughs> oh, jeez! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, I'm glad I'm making the fucking bus trip up. Yeah, I'll be all right. Uh. I mean, yeah, Pete's got his own Infinity War to look forward to. Mega bus. <laughs> yeah, because Pete, that, Pete, that's the, the only bus. reason you're going up, isn't it? To watch yeah, Infinity yeah, War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not. <laughs> it hasn't come to it hasn't bus, come to Bristol. Mega bus it's, bus driver. It's a small independent <laughs> film. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, it's it's, it's got that. What, I don't know what his name is. I'm assuming his name's like Toby or something like that. Like like a sort of like. It's, well, you know, like you get Toby jugs, those big Toby jugs. You know, those... Yeah, yeah. Actually, you've set yourself up for a fall, Dan. He's going to look like a Toby jug. Yeah. <laughs> I've just realised <laughs> it's not too late. He's what six months old? You can, cha- you can change the name. What's... It's fine. What's a Toby Have you jug? Seen a Toby jug. Oh my God, Dan! No, what? Do you not know oh, what a Toby no, jug is? Dan, you need you need to change your child's name. <laughs> Toby oh jugs are the ugliest. <clears throat> uh, they're the ugliest pieces of porcelain that have ever been created. So you, you get two different types of jugs. You got the character oh jugs. You get the character jug, which is the whole face, and the Toby jug, which is the face and the shoulders. And the face, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. My goodness. And he looks like the guy who runs the mega bus. <laughs> so, so you, he does, yeah. So oh, you know, Dan. so you know, Dan. When we spent ages buying you nothing but thimbles. Oh, no, dear. no, we're not doing that again. No. <laughs> Buying Dan no. nothing but Toby jokes. But on the, oh, but on the plus yeah. side, Dan, I, will, I, I, if, if, I tell you what, if you want to do that, that's <laughs> fine. I'm saying this now. Everyone is getting straight smashed. In the bin. But, straight in the bin. But on the, yeah. plus, but on the plus side, Dan, <laughs> Carvery. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. No, so that's well, okay, that's now. not fair then. Um, so, but, everyone, but everyone will think that's where he's been conceived. 
Like, oh, they've done they've done a Kanye. I, I guarantee they won't. <laughs> <laughs> right, so mate, he's probably... Conceived at a carvery. Oh, we... I, would, I, would, I would like to step in as a father of several children yeah. and, s- <laughs> and, and say that um, there are lines that you you kind of daintily trip over okay, yeah. and a child's name <laughs> it's not it's not one of these things oh, that we should be doing what ch- we're going to step d- away discussing, okay, from the discuss, Toby Jog thing children's we're going to bring it back in well, and we're going to say yep. Are you looking forward <laughs> to Infinity Wars? <laughs> Can I just say one thing about baby names? Can I say one thing? One yeah, thing. go for it. Because uh, Lisa and I, we discussed, you know, you know, you you have those discussions, like what you call your kid. And it's only when you have the discussions you realise how many people you hate <laughs> in <at> school. <laughs> Anyway, Funnily enough, so, me, and, me uh, and my wife, we never had that conversation. We both just had really? one name, and it was the really? same name independently. Oh, yeah. is, so and we never had the conversation. Lovely, like because because most people, I, I get. I, I mean, I'm assuming I don't know, never done it, but I'm assuming most people do. Probably they must have a conversation <laughs> at some point. But I love the fact that you've both been like, <laughs> like I three, imagine they do have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three, yeah. two, one. T- uh, uh, t- uh, t- <laughs> Tom Obi, <laughs> Tom Obi, yeah, yes, we the agreed. Same word. Um. <laughs> Funnily enough, you get it down to about two or three names really, really quickly. Really, hate to be boring. Just hate yeah, a lot of people. You really, really do. And then there's going to be one day where Dan's going to look over at him and he's going to go, "You're definitely a Toby." Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Just the way he looks, just the way he acts, and everything like that. You're definitely a Toby, <sighs> and that's just the way it is. It's not. I think the only people who want you to be going through a list of 150 baby names. Oh, what about Xenon? Well, he's an inert gas. <laughs> we did consider Xenon. We did. It was Toby or Xenon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> neck yeah. and neck. <laughs> that would have been cool. That's almost a superhero name. If you could have Xenon Frost. Xenon Frost. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <clears throat> the flame spurter is attacking Neon City. There's only one person that can stop him. Xenon Frost. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Hang on. <laughs> Wait. Right, I've just searched Xenon Frost, and they're actually... <laughs> it's actually a type of bulb. <laughs> It'd be bright. You can get 10-watt Xenon Frost bulbs. <laughs> oh, oh goodness. Oh, dear. I've got tears. There's actually... Anyway, yeah, Infinity, Infinity War. So, uh... Infinity War. Okay. Yeah, go on. <laughs> I've not, not watched. Uh... I've not watched any of the trailers because I'm, I'm. I want to go in, which is very difficult with a Marvel film because it's everywhere. Um, I want to kind of go yeah. in with literally no preconception as to what's going to happen, really, in terms of visually. Let's say um, I've watched enough of these films to kind of roughly work out um... or make some predictions, but I have no idea what it's going to look and feel like per se. There's some interesting things in the trailer, um, and I think that the secrets of the film are pretty well known. I think if you've watched all of the other 18 movies, then you're in a pretty good place to know what's going to happen and uh, where sort of everything's headed. I think that they've just done their world building really well, so it's pretty clear of like where characters are and what their intentions are. Um, you can kind of remember a few of where some of the stones are at. So it's not a massive deal. Uh, but the the most positive <laughs> thing I've heard about uh, Infinity War from the directors, the Russo brothers, are they brothers? Probably. Yeah, they are, yeah. Um, yeah. Is that um, they've said Thanos is the main character. And out of everyone, he gets the most screen time. And I think that is absolutely the right way to do this film. And I hope it lives up to it because it could... Obviously, the biggest worry about it is it's just it's just going to be a massive um, mess of, you know, 15, 20 different people all rushing to save their individual stone. 
when really you want to know more about who this guy is, you know, what his motivations are, his links with um, uh, the stones and like the legend around him. And I, and, I, and if, and if that pull, if, if they're able to pull that off and make him the actual central character of it, which, which upon recollection is the, really the first time I can think of that happening in any um, superhero film where, yeah. the, where the bad guy is the central mm. character. Um, I, I think they'll be really doing a uh, an, an interesting thing. So it's not just a, a spectacle yeah. movie. It'll be an interesting film. And well, I think I, they I have, think it'll they have the ability because they have Infinity War Part 2 as well, don't they? Or whatever it will become. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. have the ability to be able to slowly tell the story even though, yes, it's taken 18 films to get to this point, they're able to put in the groundwork here, which is needed. We don't need the groundwork for what Iron Man's been up to. We've known for no. 18 films did what you, he's sorry, been up to. Did you to. say there's going to be a second part to this? Yeah, yeah yes. well, no, this is yeah. an interesting wow. point. because in It was same... originally Infinity War Part 1 and 2. I don't know what the second part is called now. Yeah, because basically in, a, in, a recent, in the same interview I think Sam's alluding to, they actually made it categorically clear now that they're no longer two parts. You should see this as a single standalone film. So no, yeah. in the same vein as the other one, so it right. won't feel yeah. as if they're holding stuff back to kind of okay. keep it for the second part. If you see what I mean, okay. Mm. I think they absolutely will do that, though. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, well, it's obvious because like it's the stuff in the trailer, it's and um, put something in your ears, Chris. It's obvious that Thanos gets hold of some of the stones, but not all of the stones, and there is going to be there is going to come a point where he gets hold of at least. You know, four out of the five, and that's going to happen in the other movies because there's still one stone that's unfound. So the the theme of the movie is essentially going to be hunting for the soul stone. So, so Captain America dies. I don't know. I yeah. like. Is he Captain America? Is he not like Nomad or something? Now is that not what they're going to? Are they actually going to come out and say his name? Because end of Civil War, he was gone, wasn't he? He was like, that's yeah. it. I'm away. Yeah. So is he? Because he comes out with that beard, and woof. It's not as nice as Chris's, but woof, you know. Woof. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's like they tried the central character bad guy thing with Ultron, I think. And I think, um, was it James Spader? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love it or hate the film. I liked what they did with him. I liked how he came he, he, across. But, but, to be, but to be honest, though, Ultron was a good guy with bad intentions. Yeah. Essentially, he spent five minutes on the internet and wanted to kill oh, everyone. To be honest, <laughs> probably, I'm the same. Probably. Google yeah. Plus. Uh, yeah, exactly. Get onto Google Plus, and I'm like, meh. <laughs> Pete, Ultron, we've... have you thought about joining Google Plus? <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> That's I will destroy you all. I'm going to set, I'm going to destroy, I'm going to bring down the apocalypse if anybody even tries to put me in a circle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Nobody puts Ultron in a corner. <laughs> um, well, there aren't any corners in a circle. But no, so I'm just. In, right. I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see if they are. If they've. If they've kind of nailed everything down with a film, after what you guys were talking about with Black Panther, and how mm. people are saying, "Oh, this changes lots of things," and I'm kind of like, mm, "Okay, maybe it does," but I think they're. I think they're going to stick to the vision with what they're doing for Infinity Wars. Yeah. Because my fear about Black Panther is that they've done a lot of good things. I'm concerned that they're going to walk away and say, well, that's that box ticked, you know, yeah. back to the normal thing. No, I, no. I get the feeling that by the end of Infinity War, they will be in a position, they will be in a, a 20... 18 era of comics where they are willing to take risks with big IPs with new characters. So I don't think it will be this, but for example, uh, so for example, Marvel has played pretty fast and loose with the identities of characters in the past, like big characters, for example, yeah. Thor, Iron Man, um, uh, Captain Marvel, like they've they they've they've played very fast and loose with those, and I get the feeling that they're going to do that by the end of Infinity War. Like they are going to basically say, "Okay, now we're going to start telling stories that are a bit less superhero 
superhero movie and a little bit more, um, you know, well, Squirrel Girl and um, uh, what's the name? Uh, there's uh, it's, uh, Sam, you'll know. Uh, she's like the poster child for all this. She's like the Islamic uh, like superhero. Miss Marvel. Oh, uh, Miss Marvel. Uh, Miss Marvel. Like, um, yeah. So like. I definitely feel like we're going to get into that point because, and again, the Deadpool stuff—you keep see them, seeing them doing sort of postmodern takes on comic book movies. I think this is Marvel wanting to push the envelope just a little bit um, and say, "Okay, well, this is the opportunity to maybe kill off a character and then have the mantle picked up." I, th- I yeah. think the, the, they're absolutely having to look at a future <clears throat> beyond what everyone has come to know as the core basis of the MCU, mm-hmm. the likes of your Iron Man, your Captain America, you thought that's that's what it's been built on. I think, I'm sure I've heard talk of them potentially exploring the idea of the multiverse in kind of as as the as the MCU expands, which obviously then lends itself to reintroducing some of the older characters, but repackaged <coughs> with newer actors and allows you to kind of continue stories in new and exciting ways. As you mentioned with stuff like Thor, obviously the character of Thor is a is a is a female. So they can tonight, do tonight the role of Thor will be played. In tonight's episode. <laughs> <laughs> so so they do absolutely have that ability kind of in their in their future and I think that's probably where they'll go. For me it's 18 movies now. I'm I haven't watched Black Panther yet but I've got Infinity Infinity War, Infinity War to come. I I think once Infinity War wraps up I might kind of step off the train and be like you know what I can't it it's almost it's exhausting trying to keep up with them because they're just so consistent and they're all great. I I, I really enjoy all of them. But I just say it's. I I think it's a perfect opportunity to wrap this whole thing up. As much as I love some of the characters, who are relatively new people like Doctor Strange, who's only had one film. He's 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 bound to have more films after mm. that. Ant Man has had one. His second one's coming out. He's bound to have another, at least another one after that. But I'm just kind of Do a you, bit I tired. Mean, up to date with the TV stuff like Daredevil and Punisher and stuff. Like that. I and I used Agents to keep up with them. I mm. used to keep up with them both. DC and the Marvel side again. It's just there's just yeah, so much I can't. It's just I mean I I really enjoyed Jessica Jones season one. Yeah. Um, obviously season two is out now, but I've not I've not been tempted to catch up with that. I didn't catch up with Luke Cage or kind of Iron Fist or the Defenders. I've not. It's just there is so much that you know what I just don't physically it's, have it's time not, for it. It's not exciting anymore to be told like oh they're doing this crazy character that you that you never would have thought would have got their own series or their own film and you're like mm. eh, okay cool like I I I really like all that stuff but even I'm at a point where you know I, I don't know what else Marvel has that I would think would be interesting unless I, I, apart from maybe like a Hawkeye spin-off or I think in in Marvel's defense, I think they've done so many things where you've kind of gone, what? That's not going to work. Guardians of the Galaxy was never going to work, and yet it's one of their best ever series. And to be fair, once that once I get off the train, Guardians is probably the only one that I'm probably going to go back to, because I reckon they'll make a third one. I'll probably go back and watch that, but I'm probably not going to watch the rest. But at its conception, people are like, why are you making a film about a tree and a mm. raccoon and all, that's just not going to work. They're, they're just they're going off the rails, and yet that is possibly a lot of people's best favorite Marvel film. Are they going to last? They, are I they going to last Jedi? Again. Do you think? Are they going to do what? Are they going to have a last Jedi moment where they're basically going to scrub a whole lot of stuff that's happened and just say this? Will, we're opening the way for a, a kind of a clean slate because I think they've got that kind of <laughs> multiverse kind of magic wand in their back pocket yeah. if, when they want to kind of flick that switch and it enables them to say alright then clean slate we'll start again and yeah. also, they and it could... gives them, and it's a narrative way that's built into the comics but, that allows them just, to do that. Just to play devil's advocate this is, this is the kind of event in comics that does that like yeah it is, like, yeah infinite crisis and stuff like yeah. that yeah. yeah but also you've got the stuff now that Fox previously owned, like the X Men to come as well, which they've got to somehow accommodate if they want to accommodate in their in Kevin Feige's future master plan, maybe that will be a means for them to kind of bring in the X Men and the Fantastic Four and stuff. I'm kinda more well, like, I've I, done with I'm Spider Man. I'm kinda more excited for Deadpool two than I am for Infinity Wars. Because 
I'm terrified Infinity Wars is going to be, and um, let's cut to Black Widow, and then let's cut to. It's going to be like the last half hour of Return of the Jedi, where you've got like three scenes all going on at once, quick cuts between the characters just to make sure that you're you're kind of up to speed with what they're doing in a kind of a quick back and forward kind of edit and that's kind of what I worry about is that they're going to try and fit so many characters into the last half hour that you're going to end up not that kind of sat you know not that kind of sat we're also into the least <coughs> the least interesting part of comics I would say like the least interesting part to me is is when is these big crossover events where you don't actually have any time mm-hmm. to relate to any of the characters like you just like I get so Obviously, different universe, but like Crisis on Infinite Earths. I don't know if you've ever read it, but it is boring. Like unless you unless you are super into all those characters and know exactly what they've been up to up until that point. Same with Civil War, really. Like like there's there's a a pair that that, that they focus on in 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 the comic book series of Civil War, but really that main main thread is just boring because you have to know who all these characters are to give a toss i'm much more interested in in comic book movies where they just go okay here is a character study of a god who walks among men like cool that's that's really really interesting i i think the difference here is i think for one of the first times this film has stakes all the other films have been, you know, they, you, you know, when you're watching Captain America, they're not going to kill off Captain America. He's got to get through to Infinity War. They're not going to kill off so and so. They've got to get through to this. You get into an end point now that suddenly there are stakes, mm. and actually, shit can go down in in this one that probably you just you knew wasn't going to happen before, except for all the sequels that have already been announced. Well, yeah, ex- yeah, I but mean, they could. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, films coming up that doesn't involve a lot of the characters. They could also, in they Infinity could War. also, for example, they could also kill off Iron Man and still do another Iron Man, either as a prequel or much better. They could then just say, okay, this is the female Iron Man. Like they, you know, we well, yeah. don't know anything about the films that mm-hmm. come after this, and and that is exciting. Exactly, but what I'm saying is, in this one, that's this is where this there are there is this stuff that could happen. You wouldn't have exp- you wouldn't have had Iron Man being killed off in an earlier film. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. He could. That Iron could... Man dies in Iron Man three, and you're like, what? Why? Why, why yeah. would you wait? Was that the Grand Prix one? No, no, that was two. two. Was that number two? With Mickey oh, Rourke oh, as Whiplash. But that's and that but that's the thing here. It could happen if it, if it was going to happen. This yeah. is where it's going to happen, and that's that's why I think this one is a bit different because you do have that sense of importance that. The other films, even something like Civil War, didn't have because you knew majority of the characters were going to be fine. You, you're going to go on a rip roaring adventure, yeah. but the, by the end of it, they're all going to be okay. I just is there no drama for you, Dan? If then no one dies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just like to I like to know I like to not know what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, I just want them to control the marketing. I, I just want them to be not showing every. Half every single bit of the film before it goes out, and I guess the only thing that you have to watch out for is is a complete social media shutdown when the film comes out, to avoid it getting spoiled. Indirectly. Yeah, I had, I had to do that with Last Jedi because I didn't I didn't see Last Jedi when it first came out, so I had to have a couple of weeks of just kind of avoiding everything. And seen it, I've watched been. the first trailer for no, I seen it. Infinity War, but nothing else after that. Last Jedi. Mm. And I've survived just about like with, without I'm, I managed to get through without any spoilers I think you need to I think it's um, it's definitely worthwhile seeing I think it's definitely worthwhile seeing because you can see I'm going to definitely watch it again because I think I need to look on it with a different set of eyes just to pick up on all the beats that they were obviously trying to make with the film because I walked into that film thinking one thing and walked away from that film thinking something completely different which is a very is a very very clever thing to do based on a very very strong preset predefined franchise arc if you look at it that way so um yeah if you've if, if you've still got to see last jedi it's definitely definitely worth watching absolutely the same response um, was if Empire Strikes Back as well people were expect walking in expecting a new hope and they came out it was a completely different 
and many, pe- uh, many yeah. people many people were kind of had some of the same criticisms that have been levied at <coughs> the last jedi were levied also at empire strikes back when it first came out cuz it's just such a change yeah it's it's good to see though that all the people that didn't like the last jedi um it it didn't kill them they are still around yeah <laughs> and they and they and they took it so well <laughs> they did. and having something different happen to them within their <laughs> Within their little universe, kind of really, they were able to and move on, and they didn't overreact in the slightest. Not at all. Not at all. Um, I obviously have to. Um, I think thank your l- lovely little podcast for driving me back into comics again quite recently. And I'm aware of the time, and I'm aware that we've been gassing and crabbing for a long time, but. Um, on the recommendation, I have been reading um, Batman, Dark Knight, Metal, and uh, full title. Oh my word! Oh my word! That's all I'll say. I I remember. I didn't realize comics. This is um, it's kind of surprised me in this level of um, it's level of violence actually in terms of how a lot of it kind of plays out. But it's interesting you talking about Infinity Wars and the direction they can go and obviously talking about what's going to happen after Last Jedi. But this is, this was a, for somebody who hasn't explored the multiverse of the Batman universe, it's very, very, um, different, isn't it? <laughs> That's all I could say. <clears throat> I mean, what I think, I, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not, I don't read comics, uh, yeah. really. I think I remember hearing Sam talk about, in the past and just from hearing him talk about it, think this is like no Batman story I've ever heard in my lifetime no. I am um, no I <laughs> Pete you sound really yeah you don't say too far yeah I, 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 I sort of dropped out of Batman after the 10th collected volume of the Snyder run like the, what, the mm. one that had like one issue by Snyder and Capullo um mm. and um i was i was done and happy and i think the metal stuff sounds interesting in a metatextual sense but uh not i must admit i i i was i'm kind of done with batman for a bit i i, do, I don't really need any more um and i certainly don't need yeah there's def there's there's definitely more there's definitely more interesting Batman stories around at the moment. Like like Go on. Uh, right, I'm gonna go to Glive. So like um Shaw Murphy's currently doing a series called Batman White Knight, which is completely out of continuity. And um sorry, I just had to get it because I couldn't remember who it was. And it's an eight issue run and basically um it examines Joker being like Joker manages to cure himself and um it examines what would happen if every, if Joker, not necessarily the Joker, but someone managed to expose Batman for the liability that he is and the danger he act- the danger he actually poses to Gotham. And through lots of rigmarole, um basically Joker manages to create a squad within the Gotham City Police Department to take down Batman, especially when they realise that Batman, that the people of Gotham have been paying taxes to set up a, what's it's called something like the Batman Relief Fund. Mm. So all like the collateral damage that he causes as he's going around <laughs> oh like goodness. chasing, like it's just like the people of Gotham, they find out they've been paying to basically fix up for ba- for Batman, just like going around... Co- <laughs> like causing loads of shit for to cap to capture enemies that probably wouldn't be there if Batman wasn't there in the first place. So it's a really interesting examination of the Batman dynamic and like is he actually a good force for Gotham? Um and that and that to me is that that's an interesting story for Batman. And to be fair, where metal Metal basically, as a concept, doesn't play on Scott Snyder's strengths as a writer. Right. So, Scott Snyder is um, a very honest and reflective uh, comic book writer. He is very vocal on Twitter about his anxieties, especially as a father. Like one of his 
fears is um is basically what he feels and uh, and you know i apologize if i because i'm kind of talking on his behalf but this is kind of what i've picked up through his comics and conversations that he's had on twitter but one of his big fears is the legacy that he'll leave for his kids and him um like passing away before seeing his kids growing up or vice versa like his kids like dying like he has this very huge anxiety about being what it is to be a dad and you know bring up children and you know what is my legacy going to be are the kids going to be okay like shall we do this on that I'm, I'm, and his worry about it so that makes him a very personal author so when he's writing really personal stories so for example in scott snyder's run with on on batman he wrote Alfred in that way, and his depiction of Alfred's relationship to uh, to Bruce Wayne and the fact that Alfred called him son all the time, and um, like Alfred is very much playing the role of Scott Snyder. Like, what if I had a son who wasn't really mine? Like, how would I bring them up and mm. that kind of thing? And in Witches and in After Death, like he is at his best when he's examining these really mm. personal feelings about his own anxieties so then when you get to metal and it's all about an nth metal and green lantern's there and superman's there and wonder woman's there and and um the one cyborg is plastic there. man hawk man mr t the t man sorry man, see some completely man, different and you kind of <laughs> your um uh, no it's mr terrific that's isn't it, it. use fatigue um you you're suddenly taking Snyder, I feel personally, out of out of the stories that he does best. That that he does best. And when Scott Snyder's not writing a really personal story about examining his own anxieties as, as a father and a person, then he tends to kind of go more in the horror direction. So he tends to uh, push a lot more of his visuals about um, sort of horrific images and and ideas on you know, metaphysical stuff and philosophy. And to me, I just don't think he's as strong when he's doing um, stuff like that. And and so metal has gone from issues where they've been really sort of interesting and exploring interesting ideas about essentially, I feel like Scott Snyder had a really interesting idea, which was, and this was the pitch to DC, what if there was a negative multiverse? Yeah. What if Batman fought back and said no hang on for example flash let me use your powers you could use your powers for good if i had your powers i could go back and save my family yeah. and that's that's just scott snyder all, all over that's just like i want to examine what if batman somehow got hold of the green lantern ring what what happened you know what will batman do if he had aquaman's powers like that's a really interesting examination and metal does all of that but then also it has this Grant Morrison-esque multiverse um, conundrum going on in the background, which is, it's gotten far too out of hand. I really lost um, <laughs> my way with it. I mean, I'm, all the all the big issues are here. There's been... There's too many. So many. Too many. There seems to be crossover after crossover because um, on Comixology... It has like smart yeah. lists, so you don't need to track the stuff down. You get to the end of an issue, and it says, "Now you might want to read this as well, just to keep up with it." Yeah, but you can you can end up with quite a reasonable, reasonably large collection. Um, <clears throat> as I say, as somebody who hasn't kept up with Batman for a while, dipping into that universe, I probably wasn't the right one to dip into. <laughs> <laughs> You you, you uh, can't you can't really <laughs> no. dip into it unfortunately, Be uh, because um, you instantly feel out of place. I mean, I feel it, I feel completely stretched too thin by it, and I, sometimes I get that I've had that in the past where say if it's a monthly and I've had to go back and read the the previous issue just to bring myself up to speed. But actually, I find with metal that when I bring the, read the previous issue, I find myself more lost than I would have done if I hadn't have read it, um, which is quite paradoxical. Yeah. Um, I think it's a, I think shame, it's a problem when you're. I think it's a problem when you're bringing in other aspects of other stories, and it's meant to tie everything together. And it's almost a case of, well, remember this from 
this episode, remember this, from this edition, remember this, from yeah. this story. And I think and it's maybe, I, there was a parts of it where I felt I'm not enough of a Batman fan to appreciate everything that's going on here with this particular story that's going on. Especially when mm. it started talking about um, Hawkman and, and here's this and this is his backstory and then going into this and you're meant to kind of know all these little things that happened well, it, kind of thing. It stretches all the the story stretches all the way back to Infinite oh, Crisis great. and when Batman got hit by um, the Omega Beams, the Omega Ray, the Omega yeah, by Dark Side, uh, the Omega Beams by what's his name by Dark Side, and got sent back to Neolithic times. Like that's basically where the story starts. And like as I said. There's so much, in- there's lots of really intricate and interesting things. Like you find out that basically um, Snyder has planted much of the seeds of what happens in metal at the start of his run, at the start of DC Rebirth, yeah. um, in like the Court of Owls stuff. But I, I increasingly get the feeling that DC just don't know what to do with, with Scott Snyder and consequently Greco Polo. Like, I... I there was there's definitely feeling at the end of his main Batman run that he was sort of that DC were trying to wind him up and get him into this position. And then there's definitely feeling with Metal that, that he was brought back on to kind of rejuvenate and save the and save the sort of line. Um <laughs> cause now he's going on to write a Justice League story and um interestingly DC have now introduced a new imprint called Black Label. And so this is going to be completely out of continuity, out of um, sort of uh, publishing schedules. They, The artists and the writers are allowed to kind of do what they want with the characters. So Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo are going to have their own Batman. It's called Last Night on Earth. Mm-hmm. Um and Scott Snyder's synopsis is Batman wakes up in the desert with the Joker's head alive in a jar beside him. And it's kind of like, yeah, brilliant. Like that's, that's Snyder. <laughs> like, and, um, Brian Azzarello and Lee, uh, Bermajo, who last did, um, what do they do? Chris? They did the Joker did graphic Joker. novel. They also did the joke. Yeah. The Joker. Um, there was a, they did a Batman run as well. Um, Batman graphic novel. I think it was Batman Noel they did as well, I think. Did they do year one? I can't remember. Yeah. Oh, no, that was Jeff so, Jones, wasn't it? Sorry. Was it? I can't remember. Yeah, so so they're doing they're doing another print. Um and that's so that's really interesting that I think that maybe that's the place for Snyder and Capullo, like an outer continuity, just here's a character. Just do your own thing. You do what yeah, you just do what you want for them. So hopefully that will be um, really interesting. In terms of comics that are coming out soon, the one I'm most excited about is seeing what Brian Michael Bendis does with, with Superman because uh, Action Comics 1000 is out in a few weeks. Um, so that's going to be quite an interesting event. And then he's starting pretty much doing stuff across at both Action Comics and the main Superman imprint. So... I need to check that. Hey. I need to check that out. I need to check that. Mm-hmm. We also need to check if Peter and Peter still there. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> He's <laughs> fine. It's like just get him in, wake him up. Just, I'm. I'm a, a little, a little sleepy. It was no. It was. It all sounds really good. But I, I, yeah, I, it to me it sounds like Batman jazz. Like it's. It sounds like yeah. riffs on stuff that if you don't really know what's going on. How accessible is that? And and that to me is 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 the what comics has always had as a bit of a downside. Like that's why I prefer going the graphic novel route and going okay, volume one. Let's start here. Where does this go? Um, or just picking mm. out stories that you know, uh, picking and choosing specific stories because I go, oh, I've heard that this is a really interesting story, and I I've heard that it's you know accessible enough that anybody can start here. But those graphic novels are just selections of a run yeah, from yeah, a big run. But it's but it's collected the best of the graphic novels, certainly within bigger uh, the the framework of like uh, characters that have big runs, 
um basically the the the, the good graphic novels contain the whole story and you don't have to worry about anything else from there on in like you can just you can sit down and you can read uh let's say the long halloween nightfall. or nightfall or whatever yeah, and you can yeah. read those and that's a whole story and at the end you can go and that was the end of the batman story hooray rather than like week uh, week after week or month after month buying all of these single shot comics and mm. uh, and having that constant it always it feels like you're on a fishing line you know it feels like you're hooked in like oh, I, I have to get the next one because what what might happen in the next issue of this um and it, that to me is just something that I, I can't really get involved with well you know something if they um if they did a well curated series of episodes of a podcast yeah. then they couldn't do much better yeah. Then the four of oh. you on the Stan and podcast. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's very kind of you. Oh, yeah, shucks. We, I, this is where I, this is where we we flood red. You can't really see it because of Chris's. Yeah, beard. you're going to flood red. You're going to all have to flood red. Um, this is when I put my my I guess my admin hat back well, on. Um, because I'm aware I've I've kept you for far too long, and it has been. It's been really, really nice, except for that awkward bit in the middle with Dan. But you know, yeah, we'll yeah, live. that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that okay. was awkward. I think this is the first time all four of us have appeared on a podcast that wasn't ours. It's like it's, it's like, like those episodes of Scooby Doo where they would kind of do crossovers with like the Harlem Globetrotters or Batman, you know, and they would cameo in yeah. <laughs> a cartoon. Well, I like, I like the fact like that, that, that in this analogy, Chris is referring to us as kind of like Shaggy and Scooby. <laughs> which, is, yeah. which one's who? Or in that famous recent comic book crossover series with Colonel Sanders and what? Batman. Oh, <laughs> Lord. What? Was it? Yeah, was that you're right, Sam. Yeah. Or was it with The Flash? I can't remember. Or Batman and the Turtles. Wasn't that one? No. Absolutely. Oh, oh yeah, there was Batman, Batman and the Turtles, Turtles have a crossover? Yeah. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is if you're looking for a podcast where you just get four fabulous, wonderful people appearing together and chatting like we have chatted tonight at just about random stuff, which is always wonderful. Geeky stuff, the guys talk board games. You couldn't do much better than checking in, kind of staying in. They're far, far more professional than we are. <laughs> far, far more <laughs> you professional. We're shaking our heads. You've got intros and outros. Absolutely. <laughs> I know, but do you know what I was going to do at the beginning? I was going to do this. <laughs> that is a weirdly good. Uh, I, that is a weirdly good impression of a kettle. Like, is that like a party trick? <laughs> Just yeah, foley you artistry. Do a bike horn as well, if you want. Yeah. You could do a bike horn. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Just cut and loop oh, that. Dear. Yeah. That's it. I just remember. <laughs> and that was staying in with... No, <laughs> um, no, if people want to find you on the internet, they can go... They just go to staying in. Yeah. Um, Stayingin.podbean.com. That's the one. And they can find you on Twitter, which is twitter.com forward slash staying in. Staying in pod. At staying in pod. Staying in pod. Yeah, staying in pod. Staying in pod. And you're Someone also... else is already staying in. And you're... <laughs> well... They're obviously not doing as good a job as you guys. And um, they can also find you on... You've got Facebook as well, haven't you? We do, actually. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, yes. And you can find you all on the regular kind of podcast catchers, which is your Acast and Stitcher and Spreaker. And you're on Google Play. And you're on iTunes. And YouTube. you're absolutely fantastic. And you're you're a definite... Yes, YouTube as well. You're a definite... Um, must follow, uh, must subscribe, and must listen to because, and I'm very, very delighted that all four of you have actually yes. kind of pitched up tonight, yes. which has been absolutely wonderful. Um, guys, thank you very, very much for coming on. Thank you for having us uh, all. Thank uh, you. Thank you yeah, very my, much. Our, our pleasure. Absolute pleasure. It's, 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 you know, it's been delightful. It has. It's been good. We'll need to do it. We'll need to do it again. We might even need to talk board games next time. I'll need to think of a title because it's not, 
It's kind of like Friends at the Show, but it's also kind of like a repeat offenders episode. But some of you are repeat offenders, and some of you haven't been on before, so it's all a bit. I, I like to think of it as kind of like staying in. He's like Occu- Occupy Wizards kind of thing. We just kind of <laughs> what do, what do, what do they um what's that thing called where your wife or husband or partner can come and have sex with you in prison? Conjugal visit. That's what it should be called. No. What? <laughs> where no. Is this, where has this come from? <laughs> Because I was like saying, it's not. We're not. Right. What offenders. what metaphor are you extending? It's not like, it's not like, it's not like friends of the show. It's just like we've all come to the, together to have an orgy. It's a once. It's it's a once in a while thing. It's a conjugal visit. It's a touch. It's a touch and tickle special. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't dear. like where this is oh, going. I don't like this. I think. I think. Do you know what it should be? We should be just going. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, <clears throat> just for everybody else out there, remember that we are many things, but we're not wizards. Are we wizards? Everybody except Dan. No. No. Of course uh, we're not. I am a wizard. I thought you were a wizard. I thought you'd say that. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? That's fine. You know what? But I forgive you. Oh, thank you. That's okay. That, that's like, that's I'm terrified that, of actually. That you know that is the Infinity Wars of the podcast, <laughs> like podcast grudges. <laughs> it's done. It's done. It's Which is also we can all this is also how we announce that we're killing off Chris. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right, I can step in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's like the surprise step. twist just at the end is going to be this Thanos a, joins with the Avengers. <laughs> Just turn around and, and then my little face is on his glove in one of the little <laughs> next door the other gem. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time I shaved a monkey? <laughs> Why is Chris Michael Caine? <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time? It's the only impression I do. I do like I do like Patrick Stewart. Hello. <clears throat> my name's Sir Patrick Stewart. And tonight on staying in, I'll be staying in. You know, I'm convinced. With, <laughs> with staying in, <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> with Michael Caine. Just the two of them on a, <laughs> just the two of them on, just the two of them on a tandem with their bike horn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! But until the next time, say goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. gentlemen. Thank you very much. It's always one. <laughs> it's always every single time, and it's goodbye from me. Remember, stay safe, roll sixes, and. Please check out Staying In, because um, your ears occasionally need a little bit of tender loving care. So you don't want to go out in the cold, you don't want to go out in the wind, you don't want to go out in the rain. Sometimes you just want to stay in Mm. and have some luxury about them. But until the next time, goodbye. (laughs) 